of a charter school accountability project, and I don't need to tell you guys that most of our charter schools in Ohio are chronically failing, and there doesn't seem to be the will to do anything about it politically. Um, last year we had a pretty good reform that was pretty successful. There's a lot more work that needs to be done. And uh, one of the worst performing charter schools is the Electronic Classroom of Tomorrow, and they are trying to weaken those reforms and exempt themselves from it. Um, everybody knows that John Kasich is pretty close with Bill Logger, but we're going to show you a video and show you some of the things that Bill Logger said about John Kasich, just as a reminder, and he's the person who founded ECOT. Kasich. And Bill Logger has pretty much had nothing but clear sailing under the Kasich administration. Um, when we started this project, tips started to come in the door, and I think we have received the most and the more serious ones about the electronic classroom of tomorrow. And um, there was a whistleblower who came in the door a couple years ago. He met with Bill Phyllis and I, and what he told us was that Bill Logger wanted to get out of ECOT because he was tired of all those bad articles that you guys were doing on him. And so he needed to find a new way to make money. And so what he wanted to do was he wanted to prop up his online distance learning platform called IQ Innovations. And IQ got started in 2007 with ECOT. And uh, between 2007 now, obviously, technology has advanced quite a bit. And so when we, the people of Ohio, <coughs> handed Logger a contract to do a distance learning clearinghouse at Ohio State, it was amid a bunch of fanfare. We were told that this was great. It was going to be transformational. And what happened was the system was old and antiquated, and it has been a failure ever since. He, Logger got in the door under strange circumstances. When Ted Strickland was the governor, Eric Fingerhut was the chancellor. And Eric had a very sophisticated selection program. He set out a request for proposal. They had a team of evaluators that looked at those, and Eric decided that Blackboard should get the job, and Blackboard is IQ Innovation's main competitor. For reasons I don't understand, Eric fired Blackboard. Kasich comes in, and he laid the foundation in his first budget for this mess that we see today. He changed the way we appoint the chancellor of the Board of Regents. He made him an employee at will which meant that the governor could hire or fire the chancellor for whatever reason he wanted and um, made it clear that Eric Fingerhut couldn't stick around should he want to stick around. And I don't know if Eric wanted to stick around or not. Uh, he has not called me back and he's out of the country. So Jim Petro becomes the chancellor. And Jim Petro unilaterally decides to give this contract to IQ Innovations. He didn't issue a new request for proposal. He just handed it to him. And in a long letter that he wrote that is in the report, and you guys, there's a hyperlink to it, he said the reason why he did it was because it was free. The technology was free, and IQ would get compensated through user fees. Well, as soon as they got in the door, it was very clear that they could not meet their promised functionality. So we, the taxpayers, paid $1.2 million to enhance IQ innovations. So the taxpayers paid to build a sophisticated, platform for a private company, and the taxpayers have no ownership interest in this. And I'm sure all of us would like to start businesses and have the state kick in $1.2 million to help them be just fine. Um, in the contract, they lay out what these enhancements for, and there's one that really offends me. We paid $160,000, $167,401 for an enhancement. And there was a requirement in the contract that there be a single login for all systems. 
IQ Innovations met this provision by adding a hyperlink. I mean, it takes five seconds. Um, along the way, it, there were lots of warning signs at the Board of Regents and in Ohio State that this system was failing. Um, there is a flurry of emails and commentary that is also in the report about how it wasn't working. And you can just see the frustration, and there's a couple of them up here. There was a guy from the Board of Regents named Greg Davidson. And in 2013, and keep in mind, the system had been up and running for about a year, he sends an email and he says, there are no e-textbooks in the repository. There's no contract with a vendor IQ. To date, we have not received a draft to review. Therefore, we are on tenuous legal ground and we have no leverage to encourage performance. Many bugs remain to be fixed. Okay. Now, this was supposed to be something that was easy. You were supposed to go in and be able to get online textbooks and instructional material, and it was supposed to be a one-stop shop, and it did nothing but frustrate people. The reason why nothing happened is because Bill Logger had a protector on the inside. The vice chancellor of the Board of Regents, a guy named John Conley, used to work for Bill Logger, and he was the guy who made sure that Logger's back was protected. He was the guy who pushed back on all the taxpayer-financed experts who were trying to make sure that this platform worked. And eventually, three of the more persistent whistleblowers got moved aside, got uninvited to important meetings, and they basically tried to silence the critics. And I think it's interesting because if you look at the way the state of Ohio has greeted Logger, he's not used to being held accountable. His schools stink. Even the pro-charter school people say his schools stink. But all of a sudden he comes into an institute of higher learning with a bunch of experts in the field, and they say, yeah, your system stinks and you need to make it better. And then the ECOT people didn't want to hear that. The whistleblowers got so fed up that they filed official complaints with Ohio State's Office of Compliance and Integrity. And please take a look at the quality of that investigation. I thought it was offensive. These people came into Ohio State and they talked about cronyism, wasted millions of dollars in wasted taxpayer money, and they also talked about retaliation. And the Office of Compliance chose only to look at the retaliation. They didn't look at the millions of dollars of misspent money. They didn't look at the $167,000 we, the taxpayers, paid them to insert a hyperlink. They very narrowly focused their investigation. And they concluded that there was significant retaliation and it was credible. And then they closed their case. And they closed it because they said they didn't have the authority to interview anybody at the Board of Regents. And John Conley, Bill Logger's protector, was working at the Regents. They didn't even try. I mean, they didn't even call them up and say, hey, will you voluntarily testify? So they closed their case. Um, we had filed a public records request for this stuff about 18 months ago and didn't get it. Uh, Plunderbun got it instead, and I like Plunderbun. They do nice work. I was a little irritated that I didn't get it. But what Plunderbun told us was that the investigation has been closed, and as you guys know, once an investigation has been closed, the investigatory file becomes a public record. So I filed a public records request for that investiga investigatory record, and it was eye-popping. Um, the complaints about the system were well-documented. The frustration of these high-level people was well-documented. And you got to see the amount of money that we have spent trying to prop this up. And the amount of money to, to hatch this deal and to cover it up is breathtaking. And so I did a back of the napkin tally, and when you look at the public money that we've sent to ECOT for this boondoggle, and the money that we've spent, we've been charged to cover it up, and to have all these taxpayer financed employees try to proper it up, it's about $5 million. And a couple hundred kids could go to college free at Ohio State for a year for $5 million. So um, in the course of looking at this, I also filed a public records request for all the money that Ohio State has paid to IQ Innovations. And in the midst of this debacle and this chronically non-performing distance learning platform, loggers companies were hire, handed yet another pile of our money, and it was $1.6 million, and it was made possible again by one of Governor Kasich's budget. His first budget, he created this foundation for this distance learning platform. In his second budget, he created something called an e-textbook pilot <coughs> program. 
And this um, was created amid much fanfare. You know, all the teachers are going to be uh, are going to be able to apply for grants and get these e-textbooks. But it also required that anybody who bought one of these textbooks mm -hmm. had to buy it through Bill Logger's distance learning platform. There was $3 million in the first year and $3 million in the second year to buy these textbooks. But in year one, Bill Logger's company got 1.6 of the $3 million. So he got more than half of the money for the <coughs> textbooks in the first year. Um, along the way, I found out that the Ohio Inspector General was looking into this information as well. Ohio State confirmed that for me last night. Um, I know the Inspector General is not going to talk to me, but I've spoken with some of the people who have been interviewed by the Inspector General, and they say his office is not asking about retaliation. They're asking about the more serious allegations here. They're asking about um, the misspent money and the strange circumstances under which this contract was given. And we have some information that I think the Inspector General doesn't have. I think he probably has some of the same stuff that I have. We welcome his investigation. Uh, we hope this means finally that ECOD is going to be held accountable and we're willing to help in any way that we can. And I'm happy to answer any questions.